Fearless. Chase. Bold. Following. Courageous. Search. I'm Aaron. And I'm Marshall. And this is Undaunted Pursuit. Yeah, there we go. All right. A new new system and everything. It's awesome. Oh, I already had time to change clothes. I don't normally get to change clothes before starting these podcasts after work. I changed into shorts. It is hotter than blazes in here. Today. Oh, inside the house? And I say that, but it's, yeah, I say that because it's, it, well, it's, I'm not in the house. I'm in the in the studio. Ah, but the studio's hot today. It is. And it may not be hot to you. <laughs> it's not hot by <laughs> Texas standards, but it's hot. Not nah, today. I think it was about 87 degrees today, which it wasn't too bad. It felt pretty nice. If it gets over 60 degrees, it's hot. <laughs> you know, the past couple days, two or three days, it was uh, in the 60s here, which it felt amazing. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. But those days have come and gone. Yeah, I heard that it that it pretty much just turned summertime over there. <laughs> it's always summertime here. Yeah. <clears throat> well, how you doing? We, of course, the folks on here don't know that we took a week off because we have plenty of content to release in a when we take a week off. But how you been? I've been good. We took a week off because we have a lot of content, but also my wife and I. Got the Rona. We got the Rona like oh, it's been like almost almost two weeks or so ago. Uh, thankfully, you know, um, it wasn't bad for us. Uh, the worst part of it for me was I had a high fever for a day or two. Well, probably two or three days. And then it went away. Yeah. And um, now we just both have like a little bit of a cough, a remnant of a cough a little bit. Other than that, man, we're doing great. It's fantastic. We didn't we didn't do all that shoddy stuff. <laughs> the best part about it is you got off of work. For, well, not really. I guess you worked from home. Yeah, I was working from home, so I still had to work. And honestly, I would rather work at the office than I would at home because there's too many distractions at the house. So I would much rather be up at the office. <laughs> I, I don't know what's <laughs> wrong with you. I'd love to work from home, but can't drive truck from the house you can't drive a truck from the house i guess you can make your truck look like your house maybe it'll make you feel like you're at home oh yeah no kidding <laughs> go decorate it <laughs> so we had gotten some I, I guess we're so far out of the loop as far as uh news and notifications and stuff because we don't watch it or anything like that but Mm-hmm. I come home the other day and Ashley's like, she's got all this peanut butter sitting out on the counter. I was like, what, what, what is all this peanut butter doing here? <laughs> come to find out, I guess there's been a recall on it for like the longest time. The Jif peanut and, butter and the, the salmonella. Yeah. We've been wondering, uh, I, we, we have thought that maybe that might be the reason why some, some of the kids have been kind of pukey here lately is because we probably got the salmonella. So nice. you got the Rona. I got, we probably got the salmonella. <laughs> well, you see, we had one of those Jif peanut butter, big O container of peanut butter from uh, Sam's Club. And so uh, I saw that on Facebook and that recall. And so I went into the cupboard, the cupboard, <laughs> gosh, I went into the pantry. Well, that's what it is, isn't it? Well, uh, yeah, I guess so. It's kind of old school. <laughs> I went to the pantry and I got the, <laughs> the peanut butter, and I read the little em- the little label at the bottom on the back side, just above the barcode. And uh, sure enough, it was a part of the group. And so I told my wife, I said, "Well, say goodbye to your peanut butter because it's going in the trash." She's like, "Why?" I said, "Because it could potentially oh. have salmonella." She's like, "Well, I've already been eating it." And I said, "Well, it's going in the trash." So uh, she was sad, but she went and got some other stuff that she liked better anyway. So. Well, that's the way we are. We are part prepper. So, of course, we've got probably like a dozen things of this peanut butter because you can't ever have too much peanut butter in the house. Yeah. So here we are stuck with like 12 cans of peanut butter. <laughs> and they, so 
they're going to have to send us some coupons because them kids eat <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwiches like they're going out of style. Hey, PB&J is where it's at. I love me a good PB&J. Well, and the worst part about it is them kids just had peanut butter sandwiches over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you can never have too much PB&J. All day, every day. No, oh, I know it. Yeah. All right, so we are going to shoot for some shorter episodes just to kind of keep you all engaged and everything. So um, that being said, we're going to get into it. But before we do, um, actually, never mind that. I will hit that at the end of the episode. So do you want to just get into this? Let's go into it. Yeah. Well, we're. Uh, it may be. It may be a pretty good debate tonight. Just a little bit. We're going to talk about tithing. Yes. Just we're going to talk about tithing, but not not in the sense of you guys having to. Uh, we're not asking you guys for money, but we're going to talk about the idea I had. I had this the uh, this idea uh, when. I had a guy roll up at the shop. He must have thought that we were a shop. Really nice guy. He needed some help with his truck, and I felt it on my heart to to help him out. And uh, I said, no, don't worry about it. You know, you don't have to worry about paying me. You don't have to. I'll just take care of this for you. So that had got spurred a thought. Can you tithe by your actions as well as your money? So that is kind of the the question in the topic of today's discussion. So what do you want to do? You want to start? What do you, what do you think, Marshall? Well, you see, I think that, uh, yes. Yeah. I think that you can, I think that you can tithe in different ways other than just uh, monetarily or financially. Um, we we're like, it's driven into our heads to tithe 10% of whatever you make. And I think that you should, and I think that's a good thing to do, and I think it's the right thing to do. However, I also think that if times are tough and you just can't swing that 10%, uh, I believe there are other ways to tithe, whether it's tithing of your time, tithing of your talents, tithing of your uh whatever ab- special abilities you may have. Like It's like Aaron did. He... He went and helped a gentleman uh, repair his vehicle. Um, maybe it's going to your neighbor's yard and going and mowing and weed eating in their yard so you can help them out. Uh, maybe it's donating time at your church, you know, running the soundboard or singing on the praise and worship team or being a part of a ministry at your church. There's so many other different ways to tithe that 10%. And it's not like it has to be 10% of your time, so to speak. But as long as you're giving above and beyond what you usually would, I think that that's acceptable. I think God is okay with that. Very good. It's uh, it's around the same lines as I was thinking. And the reason we want to do this is to, uh, maybe some of you out there are struggling monetarily. And, you know, sometimes, you know, like my family and I, we want to give, but we don't have the money to give. So we've got to look at other different ways, which is also why why we're going to get into this. We're going to try and biblically back this up, this idea up and um look at some look at what God's word says about it. And that's the only thing that we can do. So can I'm going to I'm going to get into a little history lesson about it first and then then we'll really get into it. Sound good, Marshall? Sounds good to me. Okay. So tithing first appeared when Abraham gave a tenth of all the spoils of war to Melchizedek, the priest of uh, king of Salem. So later in the book of Genesis, tithing appeared as a tribute to God when Jacob promised to give a tenth to God if he returned home safely. So that's where you're getting, that's where a lot of churches and a lot of preachers today are getting that 10%. That's why those of you that grew up in the church or grew up hearing what a tithe was, it was always 10%. That's a little short history as to why it was it was 10%. So, But here's something I found interesting. Nowhere in the New Testament does it mention that giving 10% is a requirement. And that's, again, because we are under a new law established by Jesus and his death, burial, and resurrection. I'm not saying tithing 
is bad by any means or that you shouldn't be tithing. But as a matter of fact, tithing is a good thing because it furthers the ministry and the, and the spread of the gospel. Amen. So that being said, if you're tithing a portion of your income, the Bible calls us to give joyously. And let's look this up here. I, I'll back that up here and let's see. Uh, all right. I'm looking up Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. So you got it there, Marshall? Just about. Hey, I've got it highlighted. How would you like that? Oh, yeah. Well, would you look at that? Would you look at that? <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 says, Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. The New Testament also... Ooh, can't talk today. The New Testament also mentions that those who minister are entitled to receive support, as mentioned in, if you look up 1 Corinthians, so going back, we spend a lot of time with Paul in this podcast, so... Um, so 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verse 13 through 14 is what I got here. So it says, Do you not know that those who officiate in the sacred services of the temple eat from the temple offerings of meat and bread? And those who regularly attend the altar have their share from the offerings brought to the altar. So also, on the same principle, the Lord directed those who preach the gospel to get their living from the gospel. So that was, we're kind of starting this thing out as a in that argument, in just those few statements right there, you can argue that, yes, tithing money is important. And yes, that's what we're trying to show. We're trying to show that both tithing your income and tithing your time is a good thing. And that tithing isn't necessarily a requirement, but it is encouraged. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts, Marshall? No, not really. I mean, it, what you said and what you've looked up and found there really hits the nail on the head. I mean, I, I agree with it. And I guess just to reiterate myself, I have in my notes here that as you can see, tithing your income is an integral part of supporting and spreading the good news. And the reason money is the main thing everyone talks about when talking about tithing. And that's because it's the basis on which we currently live our earthly lives. So in that, giving our money can symbolize how God calls us to live as stewards, and those who give can trust God as the source of all that is given to supply their needs as stated in, let's go, let's see what it says there, because I, I pretty much went over 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. So let's go back to that 2 Corinthians, and this is what it says, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. Now he who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will provide and multiply your seed for sowing, that is, your resource, your resources, and increase the harvest of your righteousness, which shows itself in active goodness, kindness, and love. Hmm. Pretty much, I gave, I gave the simplified terms to that verse before I actually read the verse on that one. Yeah, no, that's good. But as I was studying for this, <clears throat> I wanted to, I wanted to, I, I want to back up a little bit in that same in that same chapter. I found it really interesting. So let's back up all the way to chapter 9, verse 6 in 2 Corinthians. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to read, this will be kind of lengthy, guys, but I want to read through 13 because I really liked what it said when I was studying for this. Now remember this, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to others will also reap generously and be blessed. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in his gift. Chapter, uh, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly ble blessing come in abundance to you, so that you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him, and have an abundance, and have an in abundance for every good work and act of charity. As it is written, and forever remains written, he, the benevolent and generous person, scattered abroad, he gave to the poor his righteousness and endures forever. Now he who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will provide and multiply your seed for sowing, that is, your resources, 
and increase the harvest of your right, uh, righteousness, which shows itself in active goodness, kindness, and love. Uh, verse 11, you will be enriched in every way so that you may be generous. And this generosity administered through us is producing thanksgiving to God from those who benefit. For the ministry of this service offering is not only supplying the needs of the saints, which are God's people, but is also overflowing through many expressions of thanksgiving to God. Because of this act of ministry, they will glorify God for your obedience to the gospel of Christ, which you confess as well as your generous participa participation in this gift for them and for all the other believers in need. I'm sorry, guys, that was very windy, but... No, that was really good, though. Yeah, you have to read it a few times to, uh, to really to break it down. I'm wanting to go on and to, and give some context to the verse I just read and the basis on which I have come to believe that one could also tithe through acts or works for the glory of God. So <clears throat> we as Christians are called to give generously, to give sacrificially, to help the poor, support the ministry, and spread the gospel through all nations. So it's in my honest opinion, all of that can also be accomplished through giving, you know, giving in, I, I, kind of put that in quotations, giving right. your time or your skills or your gifts and so on. Yeah. I do have a lot. I do have some stuff that came out of the old Testament mm -hmm. and, but what did you find? Do you find anything supporting that? Or do you find anything that is, um, that may be like contradictory to the thought that we're kind of discussing today? Uh, not really. I mean, most of what I had read and I didn't write anything down, but most of what I had read of the verses, the majority of it was in the, was in the old Testament. Now there was a handful of, like what you have read that was in the New Testament, but most of it wasn't in the, in, in the Old Testament. But um, but no, I don't have anything specific that would you know necessarily disagree with what you're saying. Right. So we're gonna get a little ahead of ourselves, but isn't it funny how well, like I said, that because we're under a new law, that you you're only finding all this stuff mainly in the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. I think I talked to you earlier in the week about that. I didn't really. I have yet to find, which I could be wrong. Of course, I could always be um, a little off, but uh, that I don't, I think there's only one time that I had read the word tithe in the New Testament. Yeah. So, but yeah, well, we got, we got just a little bit going here. So we're going to try and move a little fast um, on this. So uh, Marshall, I want to look up Luke. Well, okay. I say we're going to go to the Old Testament. We will. I promise you guys we'll go to the Old Testament here in just a minute. Um, but let's take a look at Luke chapter six, verse 38. It's another really good one. Oh, my bookmarks are falling all over the place. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chapter six, verse 38. Here. Okay. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over with no space left for more. For with the standard of measurement you use when you do good to others, it will be measured to you in return. Yep. I love that verse. I do too. I was about to say that I, I, I really like that because when I, when I see that, when I hear that verse, and I've heard it before several times, over the years as you know being a christian but <clears throat> mm -hmm. you can't you can't outgive god you can't i mean no the the more you give i feel like the more god's going to bless you and i think you have to be careful with that in your mind because i feel like satan can play tricks on you and make you feel guilty mm -hmm. and i've done that myself i thought well i haven't been tithing lately or maybe i didn't tithe the full 10% and with that i feel like maybe maybe god's not going to bless me and take care me as much as if I were to tithe more. But that's not true. God, I I, I don't know. I just feel, I mean, you, you cannot give God, but I feel like God's not going to, he's not going to bless you less because you've given less. No. I think, I mean, no matter how much you give, how, how much or how little you give, God's going to bless you the same. God's going to love you the same because God's love never changes. His blessings never change. It's just, he's going to continue to say, God's not like we are. God's not up and down, but God doesn't ebb and flow like, like, like we do. God is the same. He is who he is. He does what he does. He loves and gives how he gives. And he knows your heart. He does. That's the important thing. He does know your heart. So uh, he knows what you want to give. 
He knows what you want to yeah. accomplish as far as that good deed or that that helping hand. He mm-hmm. he knows what you want to do. So he, of course, he, you know, you got to be thankful for his mercy as well. Yeah, because you also got to think when you are giving, well, like you said, he knows your heart. So why are you giving? You know, are, is it is, is there some selfishness or selfish ambition behind that? Are you doing it just to get something out of God? Or are you doing it because it's what you're supposed to do or what he's called us to do or because that's just what you genuinely want to do? I mean, I think that's important to keep in mind, too. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's funny. We were just talking, me and my wife were just talking about it, um, how we pray. You know, you, you get into hard times and or you, you struggle just a little bit in this life and it always feels like you're asking God to pull you out of this, you know, that he's, but that's what he's there for. Mm -hmm. You know, it always, I don't know. I lost my train of thought. I don't know where I was going with this. (laughs) Well, it's, I think maybe you're going, it's like we all, when, when times are tough or sometimes times feel like they're always tough and it feels like you're constantly asking God for more and more and more and more and more. Um, but you know, sometimes that's just how life is and that's just where you are. And I think that's okay. And like, like, like you said a minute ago, God knows your heart. God knows what you're going through. God knows what you're dealing with in your life, you know? So Mm -hmm. he's not going to punish us, you know, for, you know, constantly asking again, it's, it's your heart behind it. Right. Yep. Well, and that kind of leads us into, let's look at Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. There is the one who generously scatters abroad and yet increases all the more. And there is the one who withholds what is justly due, but it results only in want and poverty. Pretty much what it's saying, the one who gives freely grows all the richer. Whether that's your money, whether that's your time, your skills, you know, it's Mm -hmm. it's basically what it's saying what is uh, my my bible kind of reads a little differently how what does yours say is that a proverbs eleven twenty four? yeah okay um mine says give freely and become more wealthy be stingy and lose everything stingy it uses the word stingy <laughs> it's really. uses the word stingy yeah <laughs> nice <laughs> I like it <clears throat> now so, that's the new living translation that's on my phone oh Okay. So here's what we can deduce is everything in this life is the Lord's. It's his creation, including everything that makes you, and I'm talking to all of you, that's including everything that makes you, you. So let's look at Deuteronomy. I'm throwing a lot of Bible verses out at you tonight, but Deuteronomy 16, chapter 16, verse 17. Every man shall give as he is able in accordance with the blessing which the Lord your God has given you. The key words is give as you're able according to how you've been blessed by the Lord. This reads to me that if God hasn't necessarily blessed you with finances, he has certainly blessed you in another way in which you can share or tithe to further his kingdom. So maybe you're blessed with being a good listener. And you can be there for someone just to listen and let them vent. Or maybe you're good at fixing things. Use that to volunteer your time and, and skill to help someone in need. Mm-hmm. Or you can't give 10% of your income, but you can pick up a few extra clothes at the thrift store to give to someone that can't afford it. And then maybe you just can't, uh, or I'm saying, maybe you can just take some time out of your week to take a someone out to be just a friend just to get them out of a bad situation even if it's just for a day those are just some ways that you can maybe as marshall shared earlier that you can show god's love through your your time and the skills that he's given you even though you can't it has nothing to do with money so what are you out yeah i like you see this, where i'm going with this yeah i wanted to go back so i down below in my bible being a study bible explains that verse uh, 16 or chapter you know 16 verse 16 and 17 oh, yeah so here it says going so if you, if you read in in verse 16 it says three times a year all your men must appear before the lord your god at the place he will choose at the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Wait a minute. This is the right. You said Deuteronomy 16, 17, right? Yeah, okay. Of Unleavened uh, Bread. Yeah. The, the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, no man should appear before the Lord empty-handed. So down at the bottom, this says, Three times a year, every male was to make a journey to the sanctuary in the city that would be designated as Israel's religious capital. At these festivals, each participant was encouraged to give what he 
could in proportion to what God had given him. God does not expect us to give more than we can, but we will be blessed when we give cheerfully. For some, 10% may be a burden. For most of us, that would be far too little. Look at what you have and then give in proportion to what you have been given. And I think that right there, man, that like sums all of this up perfectly. I'm really glad you found that verse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I I had I had read that as well. I think you know the more you look into it, the more you study into it. It's like you know you don't have to. You always been told that you should give ten percent. That you should be yeah. given ten percent to the church. Ten you know to the church building. You know, and that's okay. That's okay because that supports the ministry that 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 ministry is. But you know, I want to. Uh, we're getting starting to run out of time here, so. And maybe we can pick this up, but I just wanted to, I'll go back to this. So let's go back to the word tithe. It's an Old Testament word, although referenced in the New Testament, it's not necessarily used in the same content. And we said that's because that was the old law. In fact, what we think of when we wa- when we talk about tithing is, and that's what I think we can come to an agreement that when people, if you were to say to somebody, what is tithing to you, they they would and most everybody would think about dropping money in the offering plate at church on a Sunday morning, right? Yeah. Yep. Which I love this because um it will we'll go read this verse, but it's a good this this verse that I'm about to read is a, it's a good verse or an argument against that public display of offering which from what I've seen here lately uh, in the churches that I've been to, a lot of churches are moving away from uh, that, the passing of the plate. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Or do you still do that? No, ours doesn't do that. We have a box at the back of the sanctuary or you can give online. You know, it's very convenient and private. I love it too, because, all right, so look up Matthew chapter six, verses one through four. I am there. And this is why I think that most churches are, are moving away from, from that. And this is what we should keep in mind as well. Okay. Be very careful not to do your good deeds publicly to be seen by men. Otherwise you will have no reward prepared and waiting for and awaiting you with uh, your father who is in heaven. So whenever you give to the poor, and do acts of kindness. Do not blow a trumpet before you. Do not advertise uh, or advertise it as the hypocrites do, like actors acting out a role in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored and recognized and praised by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they already have their, their reward in full. But when you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give in complete <clears throat> secrecy, so that your charitable acts will be done in secret, and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. That's the red lettering. Nobody needs to. That is the red. I, <laughs> I hate that I don't have a Bible with red letters. Do you not really? <laughs> no, I don't. <clears throat> no, we got I, I hate it because I. I know. I hate it because I want to. In it, so that was the red letters, and when we say red letters, that was straight. From Jesus' mouth. Amen. Yep. All right. We've gone over time a little bit, and I want to leave the listeners with a little bit of something. Uh, so all of you listening, you may not have 10%. Now, I just want to leave you guys with this. You may not have 10% to give in the offering at church on a Sunday morning. But rest assured, it's so much more than that. As we just mentioned, there are other ways you can honor God than just money. Whatever you decide to give, always remember to give cheerfully, to give freely, and trust that God will continue to supply all of your needs. Yes. Do you have anything to leave leave us on there, Marshall? No, not really. Just uh, <clears throat> just to more or less back what he what 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 Aaron said. You know. Give cheerfully, give from your heart, because like we said earlier, God knows our hearts, God sees our hearts. He knows what we're going to do before we even do it. So whatever you're giving, however you're giving, give it genuinely from your heart. Amen. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Before we leave, I want to kind of give a little charge to you guys and say that we're trying to boost our ratings on iTunes. With that being said, I want to do first, if you're in agreement with this, Marshall, first 100 subscribers and ratings, we'll send out 100 free Bibles to whoever does that. So you guys do that. We'll compile a list, email us, tell us you gave us a good rating, email us at 
undauntedpursuit at gmail.com. Tell us that you gave us a good rating. We'll confirm that. And uh, once we get to 100, 100 free Bibles coming your way. That way we do our part to get in as many Bibles out there. It's the number one book sold in America. Another one, number one book in the world, I guess, isn't it, Marshall? I would say so. It better be. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't you lead us out of here with... Uh, where else can they find us on? Right now, you guys can find us on Twitter. You can find Undaunted Pursuit on Instagram. And you will soon, I hope, be able to find us on Facebook. Uh, Facebook has been giving us a lot of trouble lately, so I'm trying to wait some things out. But hopefully soon we'll get that worked out and we'll be on Facebook. But you can also go to Podbean. Dot com and you can find us on Podbean, iTunes, Spotify. You can follow the podcast on all your your uh, podcast streaming services out there. Uh, look us up, give us a like, follow us. You know, reach out to us through the email, like you said, unnoticepursuit at gmail dot com. We would love to hear from you guys. So look us up, follow us, and give us a like, give us a listen. And that would be undauntedpursuit.podbean.com. And let's see, YouTube. We're on YouTube as well. Yes. Check us out on there. Subscribe. Hit that like button. Notification bell. That way you know when new episodes drop. Anywhere you listen to us. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Anything to promote us. Since we're not on Facebook yet, because they're giving us problems, please, 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 I ask you guys, if you find it in your hearts to go share this podcast on your own platform, spread the word about it. We would sure appreciate it. And uh, we'll. I think that's about it, isn't it, Marshall? That's about it, Aaron. All right, man. Thank you guys for listening. We'll see you next time on Undaunted Pursuit. We're going up and taking you with us. See ya. Adios.